The Ukrainian military released a new video on Sunday stating that it shows the destruction of a battery of Russian S-300 air defenses in southern Ukraine. The video was first shared by the Ukrainian military's Operational Command South formation on its official Facebook page. The video appears to show numerous burnt-out and smoking wreckages. While performing firing missions, our missile and artillery units destroyed a battery of S-300 air defense systems near Zelenotropinsk, the post stated. While Russia has reportedly lost more than 65 surface-to-air missile systems, including modern Pantsir S-1 and Buck M-2 since the 24th of February, it's the first confirmed loss of the S-300 family air defense system. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how Ukraine has managed to destroy the much-vaunted S-300 system of Russia. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Get an exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash defense or clicking the link in the description. Use the code DEFENSE at the checkout to get an extra month free for the two-year plan. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Zelenotropinsk is located in Ukraine's Kherson Oblast, one of the southernmost regions in the country. The region is located just north of the Crimean Peninsula, which Russia annexed from Ukraine in 2014. It was also reported on Sunday by Euromaiden Press that seven port and industry infrastructure targets had been struck by S-300 missiles near Mykolaiv, a port city located less than 200 kilometers or 125 miles north of Zelenotropinsk. As per reports, seven missiles were fired in surface-to-surface -surface mode and they hit an infrastructure facility, a gas station, a gas pipeline, and a warehouse. It's unclear if the S-300 systems destroyed on Sunday were responsible for these strikes. While Ukraine does possess Russian origin S-300, the video depicts the destruction of an R-149 AKSH-1 command and signal vehicle, which is only deployed by the Russian Army and makes it clear which side was operating the air defense system. S-300 is a long-range, anti-access, area denial system designed to protect against aerial threats. The surveillance radar of the S-300 can track objects over a range of 300 kilometers or around 185 miles. The system has additional target acquisition radars and uses multiple missiles to cover its strike envelope, which includes short-range 9M96E. 40 kilometers or 25 miles, medium range 9M96E2, 120 kilometers or 75 miles, and long range 48N6, 250 kilometers or 155 miles. Each S300 consists of a number of transporter erector launchers (TELs), and each TEL has four launch tubes. In a standard configuration. A single battery has four TELs, but there could be up to 16 TELs per battery. So, depending on the number of TELs commanded by the S-300, it can launch up to 16 times 4, that's 64 missiles simultaneously. The system is thought to be able to resist electronic jamming attacks. While it's designed primarily to take out a rival's aerial assets, its secondary land attack capabilities have been used by Russian forces in Ukraine. To know more about that, check the video on the above card. The pinpoint accuracy with which the strike seems to have been carried out and given the fact that Russia is not expected to keep the system within the strike envelope of normal artillery range points to the use of American-supplied HIMARS. With the Extended Range Guided Rocket GMLRS, or Guided MLRS, HIMARS can reach a land target at a maximum range of 46 miles or 75 kilometers. GMLRS rockets have a reliability rating exceeding 
for a CEP of 10 meters. GMLRS can attack a wide range of targets. The guided MLRS unitary round integrates a 200-pound unitary warhead, providing precision strike for point targets. Guided MLRS AW or alternative warhead round delivers a 200-pound class fragmenting warhead that has 160,000 preformed tungsten fragments. There are a few interesting observations. One, S300 complex is a mobile system, so it can be moved from one place to another. Even then, Ukraine has been able to pinpoint its exact location and carry out the strike. It's clear that Ukraine has been one step ahead when it comes to the intelligence front. 2. S-300 is supposed to be protected by short-range air defense systems like Buck or Pantsir or Tor, but it seems that they were missing. 3. The two S-300 launchers seem to have been parked next to each other. This is a very bad mistake and unprofessional to say the least. In 2018, Russia provided the advanced S-300 air defense system to Sirius military free of charge, transferring three battalions with eight launchers each to the Assad regime, despite strong objections from Israel and the U.S. Russia's delivery of the S-300 system to Syria followed the shooting down of a Russian spy aircraft by Syrian forces that were responding to an Israeli strike over Syrian airspace. Russia blamed Israel for the incident, which killed 15 Russian crew members. Israel for years has lobbied Russia not to give Syria and other regional players the S-300 system, arguing that it would limit Israel's ability to neutralize threats, including Hezbollah, so S-300 does possess a formidable reputation, but this now lay in tatters. Viewers may note that Ukraine doesn't possess stealthy jets like F-35, nor does it have long-range precision strike weapons like AGM-88G Advanced Anti-Radiation Guided Missile Extended Range or AARGMER, but it has still managed to destroy the S-300, potentially making smart use of HIMARS. Moscow will have to come to grips with the fact that its top-of-line air defense systems are vulnerable against donated Western missile systems, whose operators were hastily trained in about two weeks. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.